We call this the tale of two rabbis. And we have tapes explaining this. St. Paul was a disciple of Rabbi Gamaliel, who was the grandson of Rabbi Hillel, the founder of the Pharisaic school of Hillel. There were two types of Pharisees, the school of Shammai and the school of Hillel. St. Paul was from the school of Hillel, and he was a student of Rabbi Gamaliel, the grandson of the founder. Now, the rabbinic writings in the Mishnah tell us that when Rabbi Gamaliel died, he was such a righteous man, what Jews would call a tzaddik, that righteousness perished from the earth with his death. He was a heralded rabbi. The New Testament in the book of Acts, however, tells us something else about Rabbi Gamaliel, St. Paul's tutor. That, according to Rabbi Gamaliel, if Jesus is not the Messiah, Christianity would disappear. Well, Christianity did not disappear, it grew. Hence, based on the standard set by this great rabbi, with whose death other rabbis said righteousness perished from the earth, Jesus, therefore, must be the Messiah, because Christianity did not disappear. All the other false messiahs came and went, including the false messiahs heralded by the rabbis through the centuries. Jacob Frank, Shabbat Svi, Simon Bar Kokhba, none of these fulfilled the messianic prophecies Yeshua, Jesus, did. However, let's go back to the tale of two rabbis. St. Paul's classmates, as it were, were famous in number. One was Rabbi Anklios, who translated a famous translation of the Hebrews canon into Aramaic called the Targum Ankrios. It is one of the two main Targums or tar Targumim translations into Aramaic. One is the Targum Yonatan and the other is the Targum Ankrios. Ankrios, in fact, was a Jew whose parents were Garim, Gentiles who converted to Judaism, as later would be Rabbi Akiva, the son of converts to Judaism, Garim. But another classmate of St. Paul's would have been Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, known in Judaism as the Mighty Hammer. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, when the Romans surrounded Jerusalem in 70 AD, was snuck out of the city in a casket, as it were. And once the temple was destroyed, Israel faced this dilemma. Daniel prophesied that the Messiah would come and die before the second temple would be destroyed. The second temple was now destroyed, the Messiah had to come. And we have references to this in Sanhedrin in the rabbinic tractates. Oy vavoy lanu, woe to us, for the temple's destroyed. Where's the Messiah? Would be the natural question. Biblical Judaism, the Judaism of Moses and the Torah, could no longer be practiced. No more Levitical priesthood as such, no more high priest, no more temple sacrifice. So Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai convened a conference at a place called Yavne, not far from the modern city of Tel Aviv. And at Yavne, various things happened. A formalization of the Hebrew canon was agreed upon, but also a decision was made to begin what we would call Talmudic Judaism, which, e which began as Rabbinic Judaism, but evolved into the Talmudic Judaism you see today where instead of the Levite and the high priest, you would have the rabbi, where instead of the synagogue, you would have the temple as the focus of Jewish worship, where instead of the sacrificial system, you'd have the mitzvot, good works, and a system of halakha, Jewish rabbinic law, to perpetuate these things. Instead of the Sanhedrin, you'd have the bet din with a dayan, a Jewish religious judge. Another Judaism is invented fulfilling the prophecies of Jeremiah chapter 2. My people have committed two evils against me. They've forsaken me, the fountain of living water. That's the Messiah who'd give the living water, as in Isaiah 44, 3, John chapter 7, verse 39, and John chapter 4. They'd reject the Messiah who'd give the Holy Spirit, the living water, Maim Hayim, to who for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. 
they'd invent another religion that would be, as it were, spiritually bankrupt. Now, upon his deathbed, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai was terrified. And it's recorded in the Mishnaic writings that he was weeping. And his Talmidav, his students, came to him and said to him, O oh, mighty hammer, why do you weep? And he said, I'm about to meet Hashem, God, blessed be his name. Before me there are two roads, one to Gehenna, hell, and one to paradise, and I know not to which he will sentence me. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, who began Talmudic Judaism as it became, who began Rabbinic Judaism as an alternative to the Torah, died a terrified man with no assurance of salvation, not knowing if he was going to heaven or hell, not knowing if he even did the right thing. He had a classmate, however, in addition to Onclios, who was of some renown. His classmate was Rabbi Shaul of Tarsus, better known as Paul the Apostle, who began by persecuting Jewish Christians, Messianic Jews. Upon his deathbed, however, his classmate, Shaul of Tarsus, said, I have run the good race, I fought the good fight. Hence, I know there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. He had the assurance of salvation, knowing that Yeshua fulfilled the Torah, that Jesus was his blood atonement, who paid the price for his sin, and the law was now fulfilled through faith in the Messiah, who kept it perfectly. Even though the temple was destroyed, as Daniel prophesied, the Messiah had come. That was the background. Every Jew would, from that point on, in 70 AD, follow one of these two rabbis. They would either follow Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai or his classmate, Rabbi Shaul of Tarsus. One who died terrified of meeting his maker and the other who boldly approached the eternal throne. And so it is to this day. Every Jew will follow the sure way of salvation or a way that its own founder admitted was not secure, 